Today I'm going to demonstrate how to mold and cast a car lens using a Moldstar 30 and Crystal Clear 202. My main objective for this project is to create uh, obsolete turn lenses for the vehicle that I'm restoring. Uh, as I embarked on this project, I discovered that the turn lenses that are broken are not available for purchase anymore. So I took that opportunity to create my own. Now, I went a step further and uh, casted them in a custom color. So the new ones will be yellow instead of the uh, classic orange. Now, to start with, we need a original. So because one of the turn signal is broken, we're going to use the other one that's still intact to make a detailed mold out of so that we can cast uh, the reproductions that we need to complete the restoration of this vehicle. And the first step I want to do is I want to set up a bed of clay. Uh, I'm going to be using the sulfur-free Sculptix soft clay. And I'm going to work that clay until it's nice and even. And then separately I'm going to build up uh, a, a bed or a pedestal of clay that my turn signal is going to sit on. Setting up a model like this um, has two advantages. Uh, first, it creates a large key that goes all the way around your model, which uh, on the other side is going to produce a nice and clean casting. But uh, it also gives me some space to actually clean that edge where the model meets the clay. Uh, furthermore, resulting in clean and precise castings that are going to come out of this mold. Now before we move on to the next step, I'm going to take a second and wipe down my original model with some isopropyl denatured alcohol um, to remove any kind of fingerprints and any dirt that might be stuck to the model so we don't transfer that into our mold. Now speaking of keys, we're going to put in some keys into the bed of clay that we set up and for that I'm using these acorn nuts that I simply screwed on to the back of a bolt. Mold keys like this are going to help with the alignment of the two-part mold and are going to help us reproduce precise and clean castings. So the final key that I'm putting in here is uh, orientational key and this key basically indicates which way the mold goes back together. All right, now that our model is fully set up, we can proceed to the next step of the mold making uh, procedure, and that is the assembly of a mold box around our model. Here I'm using some plexiglass to construct my mold box purely for the visual purposes. You can also use other products such as gator board, cardboard, uh, I've used also melamine board and also wood planks to make my containment box. Pretty much anything that's going to prevent the silicone from leaking out. So whenever you work on a project that is very specific like this, you always want to keep the end result in mind. So for my project here, I already know that I need a product that is clear that has UV resistance and I already narrowed down my product search to the crystal clear and according to the technical bulletin this product calls for a very specific uh, silicone rubber so that's why I'm making my choice to go with the Moldstar product now I also want to keep in mind that I want to cast these with absolutely no air bubbles in them. So I already setting myself up knowing that I will be using a pressure pot for the mold making process as well as the casting process. So something to keep in mind when working with uh, air compressors and pressure chambers is that there is moisture in the air compressor tank. So two things you can do to avoid this issue. One would be to drain your uh, air compressor tank. Make sure there's no water in there or moisture. Uh, the other thing you can do is install a uh, dryerite cartridge uh, in the air line that's going inside the pressure tank to filter that air and make sure there's no moisture trapped in it. As you can see here, I'm actually pre-mixing the material, making sure that there's no settlement at the bottom. These do separate somewhat, so make sure that you do mix them thoroughly when you receive the material before you start making your mold. And because this is a one-to-one -one mix ratio by volume, I can simply mark my measuring containers uh, and start dispensing. 
And uh, when you do combine them together, the part A and B, you want to make sure you mix thoroughly. Scrape the sides, scrape the bottom of your mixing container. Make sure you get a uniform color in your mix. There should be no streaking between the white and the blue. Should be all uniform color. Now I'm gonna slowly pour the silicone into our mold box, but I'm not gonna pour onto the model directly. I'm gonna pour in the lowest point of the mold box and allow the silicone to seek its own level. Now pouring in a thin stream like this from uh, high up allows the entrapped air bubbles to elongate and break while pouring. This is gonna further minimize any kind of air trapment inside our mold. Now one quick visual check making sure that we have no leaks and the first half of our mold can go into the pressure pot where well, it will cure fully. Now in order to put the mold inside the pressure pot we had to put the chamber on its side and put a leveling board in. This allowed me to put a much larger mold inside the pot than what would be uh, possible if the pot was standing up on its wheels. Now this pressure pot is available through our distributors and it also comes with brackets that you can use to secure the pot on its side like this. Now when you're putting the lid on onto the pressure pot it's very important to tighten the bolts in a cross order. Uh, you can see here I'm starting off at the top right moving on to the bottom left and then I'm gonna do the two opposites uh, the same way. Uh, this is going to prevent any kind of air leaks uh, once you pressurize your tank. Now the reason why we pressurizing the mold and let it cure under pressure is because there's still microscopic bubbles left in the silicone. If we were not to do that and we pressurize our casting to get a perfectly good casting out of it, what happens is those microscopic bubbles will burst and allow the material, your casting material now to be pushed into those cavities resulting in a uh, casting that's going to be full of dimples and it's going to be unusable. I get asked frequently what kind of air compressor uh, people should use for this application and uh, I found that a 10 gallon or about 5 horsepower air compressor would uh, do a sufficient job in producing that 60 PSI that we need for this um, application. Something I wanted to mention here is that if you're looking for a factory-like finish, a very clean and bubble-free casting, then it's absolutely necessary to use a pressure pot like this. So um, if you're driven by your results and you're looking for perfection, this is definitely a way to go. The tank is now pressurized and we're going to let the silicone cure for a full six hours before proceeding on to the next step. Now a little shop tip for you guys that are working in busy work environments. It's a good practice to let each other know that the pressure chamber is in use so that your uh, casting doesn't get ruined by somebody needing to use that pressure pot. So now the six hours have passed and the silicone is cured so that we can remove the containment walls off the mold box. I'm going to just strip those away and then we're going to remove all of the clay that we uh, set up our model on. And here you can clearly see the positive keys that resulted in uh, pouring off the material. Now that we remove the clay from our model, we can proceed to apply some release agent to the first half of our mold. Now here I'm using the Ease Release 205, which is a liquid version of the Ease Release 200. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this is to get a good thorough coverage and peace of, uh, peace of mind, so to say, some insurance. I'm going to go with the liquid version and I'm going to apply it thoroughly and then we're going to let this uh, release agent dry for about 10 minutes before proceeding to the next step. Alright, the uh, release agent is dried and we can proceed by reassembling the mold box uh, around the first half of our mold. And uh, something I like to do to prevent any kind of uh, silicone seeping down below and spilling out is I like to run a bead of hot melt glue all around the edge where the silicone meets the mold box. For the second half of our mold, we're going to follow the same steps as we did for the first half of the mold with the dispensing and mixing of the Moldstar 30. 
Now that we're poured the second half of our mold, we can put the entire piece back into the pressure pot and let it fully cure for at least six hours before uh, demolding, before moving on to the next step. So now that our mold has fully cured, we can demold it and you can here clearly see the benefits of the liquid release. Our two halves came apart uh, with no issues. They just peel apart easily. Here's a little tip, uh, something that I found works very well for this type of mold. I like to cut a little vent going away from the model, but it's not really venting all the way out of the mold. Uh, it's just uh, collecting up top. And what it does, it not only uh, helps the material, the excess material evacuate out of the mold, it also creates a little pool of material. So in case the casting needs extra material after those uh, air bubbles pop and uh, are evacuated, it can draw from that pool of material and it's going to create a nice and crisp edge all the way around with uh, minimal defects. For the casting of the lens, we're going to be using the Crystal Clear 202. And if you look up the uh, Crystal Clear series, you'll notice there are several of them. Now, the reason why we're using the 202 is because it's designated to work in castings from a sixteenth of an inch to about half an inch. And because we have very thin casting, this uh, project kind of demands the uh, Crystal Clear 202 to be used. Now, I already know that there will be some extra material that's going to be squeezed out on uh, the sides out of our mold because it is a squeeze mold, so I'm already anticipating that. Now, to prevent that uh, material, the resin, from building up in our pressure pot, as a quick fix, uh, I'm simply going to spray some release agent all throughout the pot and let it dry for about 10 minutes before actually putting any kind of uh, casting material in it. We want to make sure that we protect ourselves by wearing the appropriate respirator. So make sure you read the technical bulletin and understand the material that you're working with fully. So I'm now going to dispense my part B and I'm going to add some so strong pigment. Now if you are making multiple pieces, you always want to make sure that you actually write down your amounts of resin and amounts of pigment that you used so that you can get a consistent color uh, casting every time you mix. Uh, this is very important to keep on top in case you're making multiples or looking for a specific hue that you're trying to reproduce. Now, once we have that pre-mixed thoroughly, we can go ahead and dispense the part A and then proceed by mixing the two components well together. Keep in mind your pot life of the product that you're working with. So we have nine minutes to work, so we have plenty of time to mix this thoroughly. For this casting, I used 95 grams of crystal clear, 50 grams of the part A, and 45 grams of the part B. In addition to that, I added 0.2 grams of the pigment. Now I can simply pour the resin into our mold and proceed by pushing the top of the mold down into it. And this is where the term squeeze mold comes from. As you can see, I'm squeezing the top half down and any of the extra material simply uh, spills out, seeps out. Now to prevent the top of the uh, mold from floating uh, in the material, I'm going to put a heavy brick on it and then put the entire setup into a pressure pot and let it cure fully at 60 PSI. And just like we did previously to put that uh, top of the pressure pot, I'm simply going to bolt it down in a cross order or cross pattern, starting at the top right, proceeding to the bottom left, and do the opposite sides. Again, this is going to prevent any kind of air uh, leaking while you have your uh, pot pressurized. Now we can attach the air hose and pressurize the uh, tank and allow the casting to cure for about two hours because the casting thickness, the casting walls are so thin, I want to give it some extra time to make sure that I get a, a good cure on the product. Now at this point we can go ahead and remove the air hose from the tank and if we did a good job on uh, bolting down the lid of that tank, the pressure should be self-contained and you shouldn't lose any of that pressure. Now two hours later, 
I gave this uh, material some extra time because it's quite thin in certain sections. So I wanted to make sure that it's uh, absolutely fully cured. Uh, once we remove that, we can uh, demold the top half. And you can see here any of the extra material is simply peeled away. It's very thin. Uh, thin at those edges. I can simply either peel it away or here you can see with a little bit of a uh, uh, scraping with the X-Acto knife it's uh, fully cleaned and ready to be installed. Now here you can see the final reproduction of the lens installed on the car that I'm restoring and as you can tell it works and looks just like the original with the slight difference that I wanted the yellow tint versus our orange one. Now, if you uh, got inspired by this project and you'd like to purchase any of these products, you can do so by visiting any one of our distributors around the world. So there you have it, a simple and easy way to make a two-part squeeze mold using the Moldstar 30 silicone rubber to create some custom color lenses or lenses that are out of production using some crystal clear 202 and a so strong pigment. Now, if you have an idea about what we should mold next, let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please hit the thumbs up button. Now, to keep up with our latest mold making and casting videos, remember to subscribe.